In today's video, we're going to be having a look at Adaprox's latest Fingerbot and finding out if Fingerbots are still worthwhile in 2023. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. A couple of years ago, Fingerbots and lots of other button pressing robots became very popular amongst the IoT community. And the reason for this was the fact that you could take this small little gadget and just retrofit it to an existing button or switch. And usually that button and switch couldn't be controlled or integrated into your smart home without any kind of mass modification or upgrade. So it was ideal if you were renting or if you just wanted a simple click and stick solution. The sole purpose of this gadget is just to be able to press a button or to click a switch and being able to retrofit this to a device and just have it work is actually a lot more useful than you might think. If you've been a long time subscriber then you may remember that I featured the original Fingerbot on the channel a few years ago and as button pressing robots go this one was good but it did have a few issues and drawbacks. Some of the main ones were the fact that it was locked down to Bluetooth only, the motor that was used in the original Fingerbot was also a lot weaker than some of the competitors on the market at the time, and when you actually retrofitted it to an existing switch or button, it was quite hard to press that switch or button with this thing sat on top of it, and there was no way to physically control it, you had to make use of an app, so if you wanted to press the button, you'd have to get your phone out and connect it to Bluetooth, and yeah, it wasn't a, a great experience. Thankfully though, since that initial version, Adaprox took on user feedback and comments and they refined the product a little bit. They actually released a second version that had a stronger motor, it had more tool arms and the arms are the little things that you attach to the fingerbot and you can change out and it is weird that they're called arms because it's a fingerbot and they're not fingernails, I, I'm not sure what you'd call them. But anyway, they added more of those and they allowed you to 3D print your own and they also added a physical button which is a capacitive button to the top of the device so that way if you had the device on something you could press the button without having to use the app. But the main drawback with that second one was the fact that it still used Bluetooth. Adaprox are currently working on the third iteration of the Fingerbot known as the Fingerbot Sense. And this time around, not only does it finally feature Zigbee, it also features some additional features like a little LED ring and a feature that they're calling Wave, which basically allows you to wave your hand in front of the device and trigger the button press. So I guess it's more of a hygienic way of not having to press the button. But that capacitive button is still there if you want to be able to press the device and not wave your hand. So some nice new additional functionality and Adaprox were also kind enough to send me an early unit of this device. And although this one doesn't feature that LED ring or the sense functionality, it does include Zigbee. Currently the Fingerbot Sense isn't available to purchase as it's a Kickstarter exclusive. So if you are interested in picking yourself up a Fingerbot, you can grab one in either the Bluetooth or Zigbee variant. You can get them from either Adaprox directly or from AliExpress using the links in the description below. Just having Zigbee was the main feature for me. Having it just makes the product a lot more appealing and Zigbee's often the more used protocol. It's usually included with smart home speakers like your Amazon Echoes and Google Homes. So it's a lot more readily available and it also means that because you've got those existing coordinators and hubs usually in your smart homes, you're not going to have to buy additional devices like a Bluetooth to Wi-Fi bridge just to connect a little Fingerbot device up. Some of the benefits that you'll get from making use of the Zigbee version is the extended range because Zigbee's got a much further range than Bluetooth and the response time of the device is also significantly faster. As the Fingerbot now features Zigbee, once you've taken it out of the box and removed the battery tab, you'll be able to connect it to your existing Zigbee network and make use of it fully locally. However, if you don't have an existing Zigbee network and you plan on using it with the two year and smart life apps, you will need to purchase an additional Zigbee to Wi-Fi bridge, which will allow you to control the device using the two-year cloud, and you'll be able to control it from anywhere. The setup and install of the bridge is nice and simple, just like with other two-year Smart Life products. You'll simply connect to the bridge and connect it to your Wi-Fi, and once that's done, you'll be able to use the bridge to pair additional child devices like the Fingerbot, and you'll be able to then control them. By making use of the app, you have access to some additional controls which aren't currently being exposed over Zigbee, so you can view things like the battery level, you can set which control mode the device is in, and you can also set timers and states on the device. Adding the device to your existing Zigbee network is nice and straightforward. You just need to pop off the backplate, which will expose the reset button, 
and then if you press and hold this button, a small red LED will start to flash, indicating that the device is in pairing mode, and then using your preferred Zigbee software, you'll be able to add the device to your network. In my testing, I tested the device with both ZHA and also Zigbee to MQTT, and both of those could see and control the device, they see the device as a switch and if you turn that switch on or off, it will cause the Fingerbot's arm to press down briefly and then go back up. As I mentioned, currently you can't control the device with any additional settings like the program mode or you can't tell the arm to go down a set distance or tell the arm to go down for say three seconds and then go back up. All of that isn't accessible over Zigbee as of the time of recording this. If you do want to make use of any of that additional functionality, then you will need to use a Zigbee to Wi-Fi bridge, and pretty much any bridge that supports to your smart life will work. It is also worth noting that if you do happen to have one of those, you can connect the device to that bridge, set your configuration using the app, and then you can remove it from that bridge and then connect to it directly, and it will remember whatever settings you've stored on it. It's a bit clunky, but doing that will work. Another method that I've been using for testing and controlling the Fingerbot with Home Assistant is by using the Zemi Smart Hub. What's nice about the Zemi Smart Hub is the fact that it uses Ethernet and it also exposes any of the Zigbee devices you connect to it to HomeKit which then allows Home Assistant to see them and control them locally. And as it's connected with a Zemi Smart Hub, you can still use the app to do all of the configuration for the Fingerbot, but rather than exposing it and connecting to it through the cloud, you can just connect to it directly through HomeKit. So those are a couple of different options that you can use to set up and control the Fingerbot and they're all great options if you plan on using it locally and with Home Assistant but how well does it work? Well to test out how well it worked I thought of five different use cases where I'd actually use the device in my own home so let's quickly run through those and then we'll wrap this video up. My first idea was to use the Fingerbot with a PC that doesn't have access to wake on LAN so I could use the finger to press a button to turn the PC on and if I used the switch mode I could tell the finger to go down for 3 seconds and then go back up and that would simulate turning the device off. So this was a nice one to solve a case where I can't use wake on LAN. My next idea for the Fingerbot was using it with some of my extractor fan isolator switches. So these switches are quite high up and although I can reach them if my wife wanted to turn them on or off when I wasn't home, then she'd have to stand on a chair or a ladder just to reach them, so I thought this would be a good way to test this one out. This particular idea was one of the more challenging tests that I did because I had to get the fingerbot to line up with the switch, so I had to make use of a small bit of wood to get it to be level with the switch, and then I had to use the sticky feet in order to get the switch to press down and come back up. To my surprise this one actually did work and I didn't think it would because the isolator switch is very stiff to press but the Fingerbot managed to do it. The only thing that I'd be worried about here is if I continuously use this for turning it on and off. I think over time maybe that foot would lose its stickiness because it's not a very big surface area and maybe it would just pop off. I guess a way around this would be to 3D print a bigger foot and put a bigger sticky pad on it but that's a worry for another day. The third idea that I had for the Fingerbot is probably more unique to me, but it's to use it as an Amazon Echo muter. So when I'm here in my office, I sometimes enter film mode, which tells parts of the office to not run automations because I'm filming. And one of those automations would cause that Amazon Echo to mute. And this just stops it from going off if, you know, I accidentally say the A word or something happens and it thinks that I've said that word and starts talking and ruining my recordings. I didn't quite catch that. Did you want me to shut all of Home Assistant down? The fourth idea that I had for the Fingerbot was to use it to control my heating. So prior to me switching out my heating controller, the old heating controller was just a dumb one and you had to manually go to it and press buttons to actually get it to do stuff. So using the Fingerbot I could remotely tell the heating to come on for a couple of hours or I could change the mode and this worked quite well. Again, one of the ones worries that I'd have here is because it's in the boiler room and it gets quite hot, I'd worry that the stickiness over time would maybe lose its stickiness because of the heat, but this would be one that I'd have to test out for a long period to actually see if it worked for a long time. The final test and use case that I had with the Fingerbot was using it just to turn on and off a dumb tumble dryer. Previously with this tumble dryer I had it connected to some smart plugs and some smart switches and this was monitoring the voltage and doing lots of clever things but I currently don't have that in the room that I've put this in so I went with a nice retrofit click and stick. And those are just five ideas and use cases that I've got in my house. In your house you might have your own set of weird and wonderful ones. Maybe you want to use it to turn on and off a coffee machine or to open and close a garage door. 
or maybe you're in an apartment and you want to use it to just buzz yourself in and not carry a key, then you can probably do that. There definitely is still a market for devices like the Fingerbot, and as I said, now that Adaprox have added Zigbee, it does just make it more appealing and more accessible, even if it's just a buy to play around with or to create some wacky experiment. If you are planning on picking up a Fingerbot, then let me know what your unique use case is in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all of those things in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.